Hello everyone, I'm Anna Hollenrake. I'm a principal artist here at Mediatonic and today I'm going to be showing you the step and repeat transform process in Photoshop. So the step and repeat transform essentially allows you to repeat shapes over and over again, making your life a lot faster when you want to put something in perspective, for example, or when you want to create a pattern. So basically all you need is your layer that you want to repeat and then you want to hit Control Alt T to duplicate that and transform it. And then you transform it into place and then hit Control Shift Alt T to your heart's content until you've got the fence you want. I hope that was useful. Hey guys, I'm Daniel Huang, a principal concept artist at Mediatonic. And today I'll be showing you how we can use the symmetry tool to create some interesting geometric shapes. To set this up, you just need to click on the butterfly icon along the top toolbar when you have the brush tool selected. It will give you a few different options in the drop down list and I recommend trying them all out to see how they work. For this demo, I selected the mandala with a segment count of six. Have a play around and see what you can come up with. It took me a few attempts to find something I liked and here's a quick example of how you can use it in your illustrations. I hope you found that useful and enjoy creating interesting patterns. Hello everyone, here is Kian Kiani, Senior Concept Artist at Media Tony. Today's tip is going to be about value. I think it is always important to have some quality of realism to your painting, no matter what style you're painting. Actually, this principle it is really really vital if you want to show the right volume of the object that you are painting. So here we have different stage of value on the surface, which is start from highlight, mid-tone, core shadow, reflected light, occlusion shadow, and the shadow of the object on the ground, which is cast shadow. It is necessary to understand all of these and the only way is just practicing and observation. In terms of technique, I just make my shape, fill it with a value, preferably mid-tone and lock it so it's going to be safe to paint and using a soft brush to paint this sphere. Another thing that you need to pay attention is lighting as we have different type of lighting. Here I'm using directional light, that's why I have sharp shadows. If I use diffuse light, which is really soft light, I'm going to have soft shadows. The reason that we have sharp shadows in directional light is because all of those photons, they travel in a straight line. That's why we have sharp shadows. And in diffuse light, all of those photons, they don't have a specific direction. So it makes the shadows softer because we have light from everywhere, from different directions. And also we should pay attention to the intensity of the light, which can influence on the contrast between light and shadow. Okay, it was today's tip. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoy it. Hi, I'm Kate Price. I'm a concept artist at Mediatonic, and my top tip is using layer masks to color a grayscale drawing. Okay, this is a really simple way to color a drawing, and then be able to do a bunch of uh, different versions, or to go back in later and tweak the colors if they're not quite right, um, and not affect the drawing underneath. So, I'm going to make a new group. Like color, set the layer style to color, and then select the drawing, select the folder that you've just named color, and then hit this button, which is the layer mask button. And now a mask is applied to this folder, and anything you do within this folder is going to be constrained by this mask like that uh, here is one I did earlier I've done each colour on a different layer which makes it easier to go back to tweak the colours I've also applied the same uh, layer mask to a levels because it was a little bit dull and I wanted it to be brighter uh, exactly the same way by selecting the drawing uh, and then hitting the layer uh, layer mask button down there and then once you're happy with the base colors just work on top with the details and like I said 
very easy to go back and do a bunch of different color variations on that. So that's how I go about exploring color options for my creature and character designs, and I hope you found this useful. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm a concept artist at Mediatonic, and I'm going to show you how I apply color to a grayscale painting using a hard light layer. So I've got my little grayscale painting over here, and I applied some color with it using a color layer. Um, now, if I wanted to change this sleeve to like a nice beigey white, I can't can't do that with a color layer. Um, it just changes the color, but not the value. If I change this to a hard light layer, not only do you notice that everything is a lot more vibrant, now if I use a light color to paint, it also changes the value. Like this. So I hope this helps you take control of your coloring process and makes you feel like you're always moving forward. Hi, I'm Sophie and I'm a concept artist at Mediatonic working on Yahtzee with Buddies. And my tonic tip for today is how to unify color palettes in Photoshop. So let's go and give that a try. So this is just a little trick really to show you how to create a slightly more cohesive color palette. Um, so the one on the right here is one where I just pick the colors manually from the color wheel. And this one on the left is after I've used my little trick just to make the colors that much more cohesive. Um, so to show you how to do this, if I open a blank document with a color palette on it, these are just randomly chosen from the color wheel. Um, and then if I add a new adjustment layer here and click color balance, and then you can use alt and left click just to lock those two layers together. And then you can move these sliders around slightly, say the yellow and the red. And then if you click this on and off, um, you can just see that that's slightly more unified and the colors are, you know, they're more cohesively go together than they did before. Uh, yeah, so all in all, I hope that helps you with your colour palettes going forward. Thanks for listening. Hi, I'm Phil Warner, Studio Art Director at Mediatonic. My top tip for anybody looking to raise their game in Photoshop is to remember that your study shouldn't start and end in the software. So occasionally put down your stylus and perhaps pick up a pen or a pencil or even a camera. I've learned so much from this about light and composition and controlling contrast and unifying colour, and that carries directly across into my digital work. The same is true of traditional media, so why not grab a paintbrush and have a go at mixing some colours without the luxury of a colour picker, or explore mark making without being able to reach for an undo. And the best thing about this is, when you're finished with it, you can pop it in your pocket and take it with you.